What's up, desktopers? I just want to let you guys know that my audio might be a little bit funny at the start of this episode for the first five minutes or so. Also, Marty cuts out a little bit when he joins, but the audio gets way better and it's clear from everyone later in the episode and it's a really good one. So I hope you guys enjoy it. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding. We are back with another episode of Bodybuilding University, and today I'm joined by Stuart Sutherland, aka Beef Stew, and Stanimal Stan de Longue, and we may be joined by Martin Victoria as well, partway through this one uh, too. But boys, how are we doing this week? We also have Toronto Pro on the weekend. I'm sure you guys uh, saw what was going on with that. Got a lot of commentary around it. Ian Ballier wins, Sam Staff is second. Uh, but Stan, before we get into that, man, how's the prep going? Because you're getting pretty close now. You're looking pretty damn good. I just saw an update uh, that you pushed up today or I think it was today. Yeah, I posted something today. Uh, yeah, I feel, I feel, you know, like I'm starting to feel a little like uh, out of it <laughs> mentally yeah. you know, on and off. So I apologize ahead <laughs> for this podcast. So it's going to go. I don't know. But I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm having a great time, though. It's uh, it's fun I'm with Patrick. He, he really knows my body really well now at this point, so it's uh, I don't know everything just clicks, and uh, I'm looking forward to because I'm going to spend the whole week in Orlando last week, so I'm looking forward to to just get there, settle down, and finish up there. Yeah. Did so you know Orlando, how many weeks is that? Sorry. You guys, uh, how many weeks out are you then? Three, uh, three in two in two days. Three oh really? I, I didn't know it was that soon. Okay. Yeah. It's July 1st. There he is. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up, boys? What's what up? Something's <laughs> <That was horrible>. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. Get to a good reception spot, Marty. But, um, <coughs> yeah, Stan, you're obviously looking good, man. Like, I'm going to bring up um, your, you. uh, oh, my screen. My connection's running a little bit slow, so that might be my fault as well. But I'll bring your photos up a little bit later. But, um, like, you've been in condition pretty early like is this the earliest you've been conditioned running into a show because i imagine it's probably starting to do a bit earlier prep rather than previous prep yeah i mean we we stay on plan like since my last show in november november 6th the seven i was on a new plan and wow. i haven't skipped a beat so like of course i bulked up but like it, it, there was no meals at all there was no no one meal that was off plan and uh so like once we started cutting down the calories, the body reacted super easily, super fast. So we just even have to like kind of like, you know, really find a rhythm where we, we actually found that perfect rhythm was every week I drop about a pound for like the last 10 weeks or so, 10, 11 weeks. So it's, yeah. it's been a good spot. That's awesome, man. Good to mm-hmm. But uh, Marty, you just joined us. I haven't introduced you yet. We'll get to this too. But man, how you been? What's been going on? Good, man. Just, uh, Finding a groove here uh, in a little health phase now. You know, I pushed like January, February, March, and then just getting everything back in check and then start another push to try to get up to those 270, 275 range. Still a little guy, just trying to get big. <laughs> Dude, how, good, um, good when, uh, when, did you, when did you come to Arizona again? I'm trying to remember what month that was. <clears throat> when did, I think February. You were fucking like full blown when I saw you there because you walked in and then you like put you put a tank top on and you're like you're fucking big dude shit I was I got like 10 pounds bigger than that bro so I was only like 255 when I was out there so oh, I definitely wow, got yeah. bigger and then now I'm like holding around that same spot that you saw me okay. and then try to push back up another 10 15 pounds and get the biggest I've ever been but you like mm. you've been up in the two like 80s and 90s right yeah yeah, I'm. I'm just not used to like seeing bodybuilders in person though, because like yeah. I don't really know them around me. So like I see myself in the mirror, I'm just like yeah, that's that's like, whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah for sure. So, uh, Stan, how big have you gotten? Uh, the most two eighty nine. Okay, damn, yeah. you big motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> it was sloppy though for me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get sloppy. I just I can't get fat. It doesn't matter what I do. I mean, I had to really hard. Like for to me to get sloppy, I had to eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. How often do you guys eat junk in the like the off season? 
A lot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right a right now, a lot. I just I got a tray of muffins sitting over there on the oven. <laughs> <laughs> How out of condition do you get through? Like out of out of shape, I, I'm I'm probably a lot like Marty. I yeah. I got to eat like force feed a lot, and uh, I I don't really get fat when I'm when I'm when I'm heavy. I mean, I probably got like ten pounds of water on me, which is uncomfortable. But um, I mean, there's not a ton of fat on me usually. So, mm. yeah, yeah. but Stuart, how you been anyway? Um, we had your podcast the first time. We did a couple of interviews as well, and we got they all got really good reception. <laughs> like, I probably haven't seen that many positive comments on an individual person's interview because I don't think there was one negative out of the whole lot. So. Just, just give it a year. I'll, I'll have yeah, a bunch of people hating me soon too. <laughs> yeah, you're only the new kid on the block for so long. But um, last the last week or so, I feel like shit. As you can tell by my eyes, I am sick. I had like a chest cold, and now it's like gone into my eyes or something. So I'm not stoned. Um, <laughs> I just feel like That's what I said straight off. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm finally getting over that and getting back to training properly and. It's kind of been a slow start to the rebound so far, but um, I'll make the most of it here in the next few weeks. So. I'm, uh, I've been really busy this week, though. So, cool. do you have any thoughts on when you're gonna try to compete again? Like, is it gonna be 2024 or 2023? Yeah, it'll be next year. Uh, probably not until like midsummer. Take a good 13, 14 months or so off the stage, and you know, I'll probably probably put like five or six more pounds on, but. In the right spots it'll it'll make a big difference <laughs> so anyway anyway now i fixed my microphone i've probably just edited that in terribly um i don't even know where we're up to but <laughs> we we're discussing um how often you guys cheat on your diets but marty like obviously you eat you said a lot what's what's your definition of a lot because i know tons of young guys listen to this and they'll go how often can i cheat yeah, yeah that's fair <laughs> i mean like every day bro i'm eating five big clean meals a day and then usually, like, I can get a cheat meal, but I can get away with that. Like, you guys have known, like, I have a crazy metabolism. Like, even on prep, I'm eating, like, 700, 800 carbs on my high days. You know what I mean? So, like, take that into perspective. Also, the more tissue you have, the easier yeah. it is to get away with stuff. The more muscle you get, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely gotten easier. But I even then, like, my free meal at the end of the day is, like, usually it's, like, sushi or if it's a burger, then I'll do like a baked potato with it or something like that. Like I'm still trying to eat bodybuilder food. I'm just trying to get that like calorically dense meal before bed, try to get my food at the place that I can grow, you know, because otherwise, like you guys have seen it, like I'm blending chicken and shit. Like I'm, I'm a pussy. Mm. <laughs> now Marty's <first. laughs> They'll sit down with a meal and just eat all the time. You know, I can't do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Marty, you're but, like a robot, but yeah, at least your audio sounds good. But Stan, what about you? That's it. I don't feel like you really absorb. I've tried the 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 the, the shit, like the blend my food. It's not the same. Like I've done blending fish and rice and chicken and rice and all that stuff. But like you, you, I don't know. It's you don't hold the weight the same. Yeah, you think? I don't know. I, I it's like I guess it doesn't. It hasn't affected me like that. I could see I feel like. like if you're not eating any fats or anything and your digestion is like crazy fast, then it's going to make your digestion quicker for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think your body has time to actually absorb stuff. I feel like it goes through you too fast when it's liquid. Hmm. I mean, still, it's, there's something my, for the, like the chewing process. My only argument to that is like when you break your jaw, that's what the doctors have you do. And it's like completely efficient. Um, so I'm, like, that. I don't really know truthfully, like, yeah, science stuff to read, but I, I can see what you're saying. Like, I mean, I don't have any issues with, with that, but I'm also eating like every hour and a half. Like, if I blend a meal, then it makes it so that I can eat my next meal a little quicker. I'm stacking yeah, yeah. my food. I'm getting so much food in, and I'm still mm -hmm. eating a lot of whole meals too. On top of that, yeah. But Sean, when you, Sean broke his jaw and he was doing that, he was blending burgers and fries. He didn't hold his weight. No shit. That's Sean Roden, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when he was in Australia, he didn't really tell anyone that he had like a broken jaw and he was, he was just yeah, gone. For months. 
yeah yeah it was um it was quite funny because i remember someone um telling a story it was um someone who i think oh, i can't remember who it was exactly but someone in australia and they thought sean was just being a strange dude to him he's like why is he talking like that and he's just like mm, yeah <laughs> it was quite funny because i saw sean there too and you know when i would be so paranoid to be in an expo because well, he's at the arnold classic australia yeah. without being able to speak properly like that but he just didn't seem to care he's just like mm. <laughs> A lot of people think it was being an asshole. Yeah, yeah, I think some people did. They're like, why is he being weird? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. But um, yeah, it was funny, man. I've actually got, I'll try to find it on my phone, but oh, I actually think it was part of an interview I did and it actually went, uh, this is before I even did, or maybe it was when I was doing RX Muscle Australia. And um, I can't remember who I was interviewing, but then Sean was in the background. It was Sean and maybe like Dexter or something like that. And they're just like, uh, <laughs> just doing all this funny shit. But it was hilarious, man. Like if you actually saw it. So like Sean's just got this like cool way about him. It was just like, I don't know. He just could always take the piss and you could never be angry at Sean because he's just su yeah. such a chill guy. So, but um, anyway, uh, Stu, wait, did I ask you? No, uh, Stan, how often do you eat cheat, cheat, man, on your plan well not on obviously meal but like diet plan but no but like this whole last season i haven't had any uh patrick tour yeah exactly yeah, was I, with patrick, bro. <laughs> but before it, was, it, it depends you know i've had like a cheat meal a day in my off season or more like you know after we email like each meal just a little cookie or and then like <laughs> Got me on like, yeah. that doesn't like count. That doesn't even count. <laughs> yeah, right, it's just you know, quick extra calories. You know, spike yeah. your insulin. <laughs> <laughs> you, you use these little things in your head. You're like, oh, it's, it's good for insulin. It's good for yeah, this. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> even if you know it's not necessarily the best thing if you're doing it every meal, but yeah, it's. I mean, how do you feel like in terms of uh, health wise doing it this way as opposed to doing the cheat meals? Because I imagine like blood pressure maybe is a little bit different and things like that with the extra sodium and whatnot and different types of fats well it depends how often you do it like you know if you if you do it every day like how much how like you know Mar Mar uh, marty said he's just doing like sushi so um, he probably knows how much makes him whole water how much like soy sauce and stuff so he can really play around with that make sure you stay hydrated you know things like that but if you go completely all out yeah that's when it gets you know risky <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> I, I actually saw i don't know if you guys saw the video that um derek from more plates more dates put up about like the prime energy drinks he only put it up i think yesterday yeah, or the day yeah. before okay. about how it, it's uh we've got israel i think it's israel adesanya and alec Vol volkanovsky who's actually from um sydney here in australia um they're actually being endorsed and sponsored by prime which is obviously that like I haven't even properly looked into it, but it's like a hydration drink, I guess, like similar to like a Gatorade or something like that. But they've used uh, really low sodium and still got high potassium and things like that in it. And they're saying that, you know, if people are actually using this as their hydration method and they're neglecting the sodium, because obviously sodium, too much sodium in, an, in one of these drinks makes it taste slightly worse, then they can go into like, uh, what's it called? Hypoglycemia? Hyperkalemia, not hypoglycemia. Um, hyperkalemia and there was some cases of this but obviously the ones i did here was like he read out one that a guy drank like i think it was eight coconut waters and he was training all day and, and stuff like that because <laughs> coconut water has high potassium yeah. and low sodium as well yeah, but high. um but these sorts of things like you know if some kid is playing sports and i think this is the best thing for it may drink four liters in a day mm. and may stay away from sodium that can be obviously an issue and it's gonna like you know if they don't go hyperkalemic then at least they're gonna kill their performance so i was yeah. always like i don't know if you guys saw that but what do you think about that marty i know you might have some say on it yeah i mean i definitely saw that it's very interesting man like i mean especially being a bodybuilder and understanding like electrolyte balance and the effects it can have i mean we try to you know piss everything out and get dehydrated <laughs> get yourself in a bad predicament um, you know, it's put guys in the hospital before. We've seen it happen. You know, Big Romney did that to himself once. Um, I know there's a bunch of other cases, but that's like one that specifically sticks out in my head because I know Milos like saved his life because they were going to, they wanted to give him potassium. Um, mm. But uh, it's very, you know, like it's dangerous. Uh, I don't think it's really that big of a deal if these kids are drinking like one prime and then they're drinking water i mean coaches shouldn't be telling their kids to hydrate over the top of 
on top of that and be drinking Gatorade and stuff like that too. But it is kind of crazy that they're promoting it in such a big way like this. It's taking over all these sports. It's UFC's main drink. Um, and it is most, it's pretty much all potassium. If you watch the video, it's pretty interesting. Like sodium is very low in it, but um, yeah. I, I'm guessing a lawsuit will happen or they'll change the formula pretty soon just because of the videos. Yeah, because I was thinking someone could literally cite Derek's video if they have a hyperkalemic episode and they had multiple prime drinks and they think it's a hydration formula and they're overdoing it. I mean, that's literally, I was going to make a video and I was thinking about it on saying like, I bet that this ends up in some sort of a lawsuit against Prime and they probably settle and it, they probably continue on with their business, but they just, I'm sure they're going to steer away from saying it's like a hydration. They have the, like the, he was saying how they have the UFC hydration station, mm -hmm. the Prime hydration station. So it's yeah. like, it's, uh, you may not be hydrating at that point. I mean, if you are potassium deficient and you have a ton of sodium in your diet and tons of sodium around whatever training you're doing, then fine. But yeah, it's just more those ratios. And like we, us, you know, all of us would be in the know in terms of we'd be able to look at the label and go, oh shit, there's no sodium in there. I need some sodium. But the average person or someone who just, you know, will read a headline and believe it sort of thing, they they won't do that. So uh, Stu and Stanley, what do you, what do you guys think about this? I think the biggest oh, go ahead. Sorry, I should, I should have said one person first. <laughs> you go first, Stu. I wonder, like, if... You know how, like, fighters will dehydrate themselves really hard to, like, get, you know, make weight for a fight? I wonder what would, like... They're probably depleting, like, all their electrolytes, right? So they yeah. start, like, filling back up on, I don't know, a prime or something, or a lot of them. Is that going to, like, give them a heart attack? Yeah. I don't really know enough about that to yeah. like say. It, it it's very good. much good. It's it's that's that's one of the biggest dangers is like right like you when you sweat you're sweating out all of your sodium, so if you're not replenishing that but you're drinking a bunch of potassium you get that ratio to go like this, definitely. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like all sorts of things that are not good for performance. Yeah, I mean like. What they do is like way more extreme than what we do. Like, yeah, yeah, because they go labor. like They'll to drop death. Like 15, <laughs> 15, 15 is, 20 pounds, it's crazy. Yeah, classic physique can be not not far off. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess you got experience with that, huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I know, like, when you were in classic physique, Stan, I know you would have been like filling out that sort of weight limit as well, and. We know like bodybuilders it vary so much. Like there are some pros that will take no diuretics. There are some that will take a bit and there's some that will take absolutely tons. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that plan changes as well as guys go through their carb up process. I think guys are always more inclined to add a little bit more rather than maybe hold off, you know? So it, it depends obviously on the bodybuilder, but most bodybuilders now will actually drink water while they're, you know, doing that sort of stuff or they'll cut water to a certain amount or things like that. So it seems like less that guys are being more brutal in terms of like cutting water. But I actually did hear a podcast. It was on Cutler Cast the other day with Jay Cutler and Jay Cutler said that he, for the 2001 Mr. Olympia, didn't drink water for three days and he was using diuretics as well because obviously he test po tested positive um, for diuretics in 2001 as well. And he said oh, I, he wouldn't do it again or something, but... It's like, it's crazy that that was probably his best look to date. And that's like obviously by far the best he looked then. But I imagine like that sort of thing. Like there are guys out there in amateur contests as well. Like I I had a client and he, um, well, was a guy I know that basically said he's going to use this diuretic, this diuretic and take this potassium supplement. I'm like, you know, that's potassium sparing, right? Uh -huh. You know, you can have a heart attack from doing this. And he said, oh, no, he said to take this one, but I thought I'd take this as, do this plan as well. I'm like, this is where things go wrong, you know? And people could be taking a potassium supplement, drinking primes, thinking sodium's bad for their blood pressure, and then their training. It's like, that's like a recipe for disaster. But Stu, you made a good point, man. Like, obviously, with, you know, cutting weight for UFC fights and then maybe not being as knowledgeable as more, I suppose, bodybuilders that compete are in terms of a potassium, sodium, things like that, and just thinking, yeah, I'm going to hydrate on these primes. That's like super, super dangerous. So, good point. But St Stan, like, do you think do you think this can be dangerous for people? You know, for the, uh, maybe the less educated sort of person think, out there, which is most people. 
the biggest problem is that they you know they kind of like made the sodium like uh, the bad guy which is actually really important in the body because as long as you have a lot of sodium and it should be an issue with the potassium that's when the balance goes off that starts to be a, a, an issue but um like scaring people off sodium i mean all the connection in the body all the neurotransmissions all the muscular contraction it's all from sodium so we, we need that a lot especially if you're sweating so i understand people with a lot of you know junk food and it's loaded in sodium and then inactive yeah it's not good for them <laughs> before like most people were you know moving you need you need at, you need at least a good amount of sodium in your diet a lot yeah. of people are, like are scared of sodium now that like I've, I've seen a lot of people scared of sodium and like cutting off on that and uh Especially if you're living somewhere where it's warm and you sweat a lot, like you, you need to drink to like replenish your sodium levels. Yeah. And for the like the sedentary person as well, the person that doesn't train much, that does very low level exercise, maybe just goes for walks, doesn't sweat much. I think like having a prime that is high in potassium, the high potassium is probably a good thing because they're probably eating tons of sodium through their diet anyway. Like a lot of people do have very high sodium in their diet that mm -hmm. don't do anything. So it's probably not bad having that amount of potassium there, but yeah, like if it's marketed at athletes and all that sort of stuff, then I see it being some sort of a problem in terms of like, that's the best way to hydrate. Cause you know, like in terms of blood serum, potassium to sodium, what we're naturally at, it's not the, the same ratios. So um, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about the Toronto Pro, which was just on the weekend. I'll bring up some video of that. Hopefully the stream runs smooth. And it was a battle between two guys. It was Hassan Mustafa and Ian Valier. And there's a fair bit of controversy around this one because by photos, by the video as well, I have Hassan personally. But there has been, uh, I've seen some commentary as well, and I'll play that video soon, of um, Tarek El Gindi on Mr. Olympia TV. Also Paul uh, Lozon as well, who was a judge at the show, basically giving uh, the reason as being Hassan Mustafa's midsection being, you know, n maybe not the whole reason, but a big contributing factor as to why he didn't win this contest. So Marty, I've sort of talked to the other guys for this podcast on their opinion, but we'll get them in this show as well. But Marty, what did you think about the battle between uh, Hassan Mustafa, who's on the left, for those who don't know, and Ian Valier, who's on the right? Oh man, I think <clears throat> this was an awesome battle. It's kind of a difference between a mass monster and a conditioning guy, you know. Um, Ian has a great V taper. I like his shape better. Hassan was bursting full. Um, I liked this look a little better than Orlando. But I think Orlando, he was a lot more crisp in the glutes and hamstrings, Hassan was. And better. I really think that this came down to. Ian's conditioning was a little bit more crisp and Ian outposed him in every pose, in every transition. And that's, I think, where he won the show. And it really shows through. Um, Hassan just let his waist out at, at bad times. You see it happen. Uh, but Hassan's physique, man, <clears throat> those tiny little dials and he's... <laughs> he's Marty, your connection is rough, man. He looks wild. Hey Marty, maybe um maybe connect like get off your Wi-Fi. I'll try to get on Wi-Fi. Your connection's a bit rough. But anyway, um Stan, what did you think about the battle uh, here as well? Because like for me, like I'll just quickly give my opinion. Like I heard some things raised on other podcasts and Hassan, Hassan like he doesn't pose with that. Uh, and Stu, you can probably actually speak about this. I'll ask you about it. Some people said about your posing that you didn't smile and things like that. Now, one thing I'll say about Hassan's okay. is he doesn't pose with any sort of, or rarely with any sort of enthusiasm. He didn't hit the traditional side tricep, a few things like that, he's, but he didn't pose smiling. without that pop. He's smiling there. At least he's smiling. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but what did you think about, I suppose, like watching Hassan and seeing him pose versus Ian? Like, Do you think that was a factor as well? Yeah. Oh me, uh, I thought okay. Um, no, for me, like like Marty said, it was you know spot on. I think Ian really won, like you know the presentation and you know in in between poses all the the time on stage more than anything because it was like size versus shape. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, Ian it might be a little more like conditioned. I don't. It's not that obvious to me. 
uh, based on videos but um, and pictures that I saw. But yeah, it's uh, just two different physique, one more muscular, one more shaped. And, and then I think the presentation was what really uh, pushed uh, the, the, the scale toward uh, Union's favor. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it was sort of presentation, and um, I mean, I mean, for, for me, I personally had Hassan winning based on what I've seen. But yeah. that's you know, a lot of people said it was different being there, and you can mm -hmm. even see that back to old bicep Ian actually has improved that pose so so much compared yeah. to what he was like at the Olympia. So Stu, what did you think about the battle, and did I suppose like what do you think about the posing, and did Hassan's uh, midsection come into it? Yeah, I mean, they seem to like harp on that a lot now you see the guys they're rewarding you know they do have really tight midsections it's i wouldn't say it's bad like he's not like got a mm. gut hanging out per se but like just a little bit in between poses that being said though i mean i'm looking at like they're running through all these shots here and like i don't see like a single like body part wise i don't see a single body part on hassan that ian is beating you know like quads arms delts everything in his back like maybe the side leg, you know, Ian's got a really good side leg. Um, but like, you know, in terms of like body fart for body fart and, and in the poses, he, he really is like beating him, I think. But it's a lot of intangibles, I guess. And I mean, you know, you look at the last, you know, the last couple of shows here. I, I, I beat a lot of people in poses that I didn't beat in the lineup, you know, and mm. you know, it's stuff like, you know, they were harder than me or maybe they were, they liked their posing better or whatever that put them ahead. So, <coughs> I mean, I, I understand why they gave it to Ian. It's also Toronto, <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, Ian's from like Toronto area, I think. So they can't hurt. Um, yeah yeah i mean like obviously like the crowd are going to be going nuts for ian so you are a human it's like you know if you talk about uh nba referees or whatever like once they're refing a home game like in the finals it's like the whole crowd's going ballistic it's going to somewhat influence your mind in some way and it's going to make you think well no wait is he really on is he beating him like it's going to at least make yeah. you second guess like, if it is close so um there's yeah maybe something to be said for that but i don't know if the judges change your opinion based on that or anything like that but um yes so uh i mean do you think i suppose like the overwhelming question is like do you think the midsection played a role do you think if hassan had a tight midsection just say it was as small as ends like there's no sort of bloke coming out i don't think it was like terrible i think we've seen way worse in the past do you think that i suppose i'll go through all three of you guys who thinks that I suppose I'll go to you first, Marty. Do you think that if Hassan had a small midsection, he would have won? Yeah, probably. But presentation means a lot, man. And, like, I will say, like, I don't think Hassan, like, that front lat spread, like, I know for a fact Steve Weinberger hates when your hands are like that on your waist. Like, there's yeah, so okay. many things that he can polish, man, that he'll be he, – he's a, a show-winning bodybuilder. He'll be at the Olympia, too. So – I, I don't think it's necessarily just the waist. I just think it's a polishing of everything. But if, if Hassan had a tiny waist, he's a Mr. Olympia type of bodybuilder, bro. Mm, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I hate the, the hands like that on the front lat spread as well. And he's so thick anyway, he's better off putting his hands like how Ian's are and pushing his elbows further uh, out further wide, I guess. So And making his maybe his shoulders look a little bit wider. So it's really like the worst idea to do for him to make himself look even thicker through his whole section so i'm not sure why he does that because look you see on ian it looks like so much more of a taper but hassan is just so much rounder and more filled out that's that's i suppose why i had him winning um stan what do you like do you think yes or no would he have won if he had a small midsection but yeah obviously i mean <laughs> everybody you give them a small midsection you give them a big advantage you know? Um, yeah, I mean, it, like Ian's had a smaller midsection too. He was like, we would win, you know. Like he, he, he's got a lot of muscle. Like as long as a lot of muscle, if you know, if you can put that, the, the amount of size on the body uh, with a and have a smaller waist, it's gonna look insane. Yeah, Stu, do you think so? Um, 
maybe. I, it's it's weird because like everyone's given the shape battle to Ian here, right? But like. If you look at his back poses and how they kind of fit together and the proportions and stuff, like I think Hassan looks way prettier in like the back lat spread there, and like just overall the the way it looks, you know, not just looking at their glutes and hams or bits and pieces, you know, I think he looks a lot better in that pose and in the back double than Ian does. He, he, he's just kind of put together weird in his back, you know, um, and there's certain poses for each of them really. That are like really awkward you know like the ab thigh is not great for ian you know he always hits it from the side um and then hassan has like an eight pack so he does it straight on and even with a wider waist it looks pretty damn good um so yeah there, now i'm looking at it more like i really could have seen like look at that ab and thigh like he's got a wider waist but like that's really good man definitely be yeah in there you know um I think I think it could be like an apples and oranges thing, man. And um, I'm sure Hassan's going to go on to another show after this and keep rolling. He'll probably get better as he goes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I thought Ian kind of had it in the bag. Now I'm looking at this more and more. I'm like, this could have really gone either way. Yeah, I just think there's so much roundness to Hassan. And uh, I mean, I always say I wasn't there. You know, like, and there's plenty of people that were there, but it's like how biased of their opinions. Because obviously, if you do a podcast with a dude, like when Marty was competing last year, to stay completely impartial was hard. And then I put them side by side, and you go, well, Marty wins more poses. But then you go, oh, okay, well, I, I get it a bit more afterwards. But so you sort of, it's hard to separate yourself from it. And when I'm at events, when I have clients competing, I always underrate them. I always go the opposite way of thinking, no, I'm trying to give them a level up in my head. And I'm like, no, nah, they'll lose. And they win. And I'm like, and everyone's like, yeah, well, obviously they're going to win. I'm like, oh, okay. So I really struggle to separate that. So I think obviously the people that are at the event, that, you know, obviously I'm a podcast with Ian and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be hard for them to completely separate that. But yeah, it's tough. I mean, I wish I was as there a, so I could give a really a unbiased opinion. As a competitor too, like, I caught myself doing this today. I was looking at comparison posts from New York. I was like, uh, you know, because it, it, you know, Tony definitely deserved to win that show. But now I'm looking at these photos like, oh, I kind of beat him there. Wait, did he really deserve to win? You know, you start playing these fucking games, you'll drive yourself crazy. Um, yeah. And, you know, calls just go the way they go sometimes. And you got to you gotta deal with it. So. Hmm. Yeah, to me, for you, with you in New York, you know, had I been there, maybe I'd see it different. You just don't know unless you're there and... There's certain people that look better in person, and I think Ian's probably one of those people. Um, uh, but... Ian's one thousand percent one of those people. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I'm the only one. Have you seen him in person, Stu? When he's I have, not, no. have you, Stan? Yeah, the Olympia 2020. Yeah, like up close, dude. Like I don't know. Like Texas Pro when he beat me my in my pro debut. Bro, he was fucking skinless. Like in pictures. Yeah. Everybody was like, Kuklo beat him." But in person, it was like not a fucking chance. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. If that that showed what you know by photos and everything looked close. But I think you can still say Ian probably won it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think that that was around Ian's all time best. How do you think this package compares to that package? Um, I'd say it's close. I don't think it's quite as good because. Texas Pro, dude, he was. That's, in my opinion, that's his best look he's had to date. Um, yeah. It, I agree. That or the Arnold right after that when Nick beat him because he just he looked great at that. Arnold, honestly. Down. Um, <clears throat> but this one, like, is another one that I think, like, in person, he probably looked way more wild than he did in pictures because that was the first time that I'd got to see him in person and I was like, Okay, this is the first time I really believe it that Ian's like, no, guys, like, really, I'm, like, disgusting peeled. Because he doesn't have striation. So, like, a lot of his muscles aren't really super strided. So you're like, is it peeled? But it's literally skinless. Like, it's wild. Yeah. That actually, I always mention on this channel when I talk about William Bonac. But seeing him versus Sean Roden in Australia, that time where it was William's first crazy breakout show... 
It's like he might have not have had all these crazy striations everywhere, but that hardness of the muscle and the bubbliness that you just couldn't, it didn't translate as much in pictures. He still looked wild in pictures, but being there in person, I was like, if I give it to William, I'm not even mad, you know, like, cause he posed with such like, cause you know, Stan, like Sean posed very, very relaxed. And this was William's first time out there as a final two call out and William's going nuts. And when he hits that like crab most muscular, I was like, whoa, that beat Sean on that pose. And I'm like, this is crazy. Cause William came out of nowhere, but yeah, I understand what you mean. When you see these guys in person, especially the ones that don't have striations, people say it about Steve Kuklo as well, um, because he doesn't have those that deep um, muscle separation. But when you see him in person, you're like, oh, man, he's actually pretty hard. And he's won shows like Ian where people are like, no way you should have won yeah. by the photos and by the video. But maybe being there in person, it's a different sort of story. And some people say about Hunter too. I don't know if that's if that's a thing, but some people say he's Hunter bigger, looks better he's in person. He's bigger in person than... Yeah. He's bigger than he seems in uh, in pictures. Well, he's obviously guest posing with him. Yeah, he's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I th that's got to be the worst for like internet bodybuilders, though, because like if you look like shit in pictures, and then you got like everybody on the buys and tries comments just shitting on you, saying you shouldn't have won the show, and everybody <laughs> there in person was like, "Yeah, he won the show." That's like that's got to be the worst for you. Mm. I feel sorry for those guys. Hey, Stan, I, I feel like you're... How tall are you? I was 5'10". <laughs> was? <laughs> yeah, when I was doing class, I was 5'10". Yeah, so you're, like, obviously, like, well, not the tallest out of us, the tallest out of Stu and, and Marty as well. But I feel like when I see you standing next to guys, you appear much bigger than just standing by yourself. Do you find that? Well, always, yeah. 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 I thought so because even those couple of inches. Sorry, I thought I thought you were taller than that, Stan. No, five ten. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now I want to share. Um, I want to. Uh, sorry, one second. I just want to share a video where Tarek uh, El Gindi, and uh, also who else is talking about it? Paul Lowe's on on the latest episode of Bro Chat are talking about um, this. I suppose why Hassan Mustafa potentially lost uh the 2023 toronto pro so i want to open this up it might just start playing straight away so let's see if it does that give us like a brief synopsis as to what like what you think put him over hassan um there was a couple of things um hassan was showing some distension in the midsection on his side shots uh at times he was letting it go and it was distending and you know that's that's big you know that that's a that's a big uh you know point point against uh, and from the back, Hassan wasn't as hard as Ian, not 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 nearly as hard as Ian from the back. Um, so that played into it. Um, and overall, Ian's just had a more finished or, or complete look with, with the combination of conditioning, dryness, fullness, and the complete physique. He just had a better overall total package. Hassan Mustafa, massive, great conditioning, but we have to contain the abdominal section. Yes, this is that important because it can be dysfunctional towards every single pose you hit on the front double biceps, on the front let spread, the transitional poses. And also in terms of the illusion, you have great legs, but if your midsection is coming out, then the legs are not that big anymore. And if you have small clavicle bones and the waist is coming out and the abdominal section is coming out, then you become even more narrow despite being a mass monster. Hassan Mustafa is incredible. He has... So obviously that's from, you know, a guy that was judging the show and a Mr. Olympia judge. So you can see there, obviously, when he's discussing it, he says, you know, in the transition poses. So obviously the judges are judging the transitions as well. So that was probably taken into account, I've got to imagine. But yeah, it's interesting that there is, like Stu said, there's so much more emphasis on it nowadays than there was, you know, 10 years ago. It was to seem like guys could get away with a bit more. I think Hassan, have he's been judged 10 years ago, I think that he wins, like hands oh. down. But I will say one thing, what Paul Lozon said, saying Ian being more complete, I, I like disagree with that in terms of filled out body parts. Like you said, yeah. Stu, there's very few body parts on Ian maybe hamstrings i'd say probably hamstrings he's got on hassan um that he actually wins like body part for body part and it was sort of like that with dorian yates back in the day he had a crazy back but could you name any other body parts where dorian dominated other people 
like it wasn't really there wasn't too many you know so well, um you can say the same about chris bumstead they don't have like yeah. that one body part but he just destroyed everybody he exactly but he still has body part parts i think that still yeah yeah but he still has body parts i think that you could say are like in that whole lineup they're like right up there or they're beating a lot of people i guess it's but with ian you could probably say his chest is where's that sit in the lineup you know his calves and you know certain other body parts but we weren't there and obviously like paul said from the back and like you said marty it probably doesn't show through in person because he doesn't have those deep slits in the glutes he yeah he's got detail in the hamstring but it's like it's like his skin is saran wrapped on there and that was one thing when i saw branch warren in person i was like i get it i get it why he places so high in photos I, i'm like why is this dude doing so well in person you're just like holy <laughs> like you just sort of like stare back and you're like that's insane so I, I i do get it a lot more and i'm sure seeing ian in person he would have been an absolute freak so yeah it's tough to say but um anyway guys we've got plenty of listener questions so let's get to a few of those but did you guys just one second did you guys see that's what's going on with the men's physique division that's literally what i was about to ask perfect time oh. <laughs> yes yes so what do you think about it, stan i think it's awesome i think it's uh it's about time and I think it's oh, also, so just, just so people know as well, I should probably explain this. They're actually yeah. putting a weight cap on men's physique based on your height. So it's like the classic physique, but it's going to be a lower <sighs> weight than classic physique. So sorry, man, go on. Yeah. So after the Olympia 2023, they're going to start doing that. And uh, I would guess it's going to be at like five pounds less than classic physique at least. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's going to definitely completely change the look of, of the division. Yeah, um, well, I think they should make it like ten or fifteen pounds less. Agreed. But I, that, I, there's a lot of guys who can't even transition now to classic. I know. That's just because they're freaking sissies and don't train any legs. <laughs> you did it I just fine. Them, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah, a lot of them don't don't. Well, they don't train the legs to be able to compete in, in classic physique. But well, that's exactly what's going to happen. Like you got to take weight off of somewhere. You're going to have really bad twig legs in that division, man. No, it's going to yeah. be worse. And it's one of your heaviest body parts. That's what that's everyone's been making like jokes and like like meme pictures of like guys with like chicken legs <laughs> after this announcement. It's like it's probably gonna happen. It yeah. might, but that's how they reward it or not, you know. Yeah, I mean I, I don't understand men's physique at all, dude. Yeah, like same. I the criteria <laughs> is like, it's 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 almost as bad as bikini. Like I think they all look really good. Like I think they all look great, right? But like how do you decide? I don't know. Like, man, this physique is all about taper, cap delts. They don't want bulky arms, nice upper chest, you know, and round like wide back. That's it. Great taper. But like, if you're too capped and like too tapered, you know, I've seen some guys who are like a little, like just gigantic delts. It's like they, they don't really win shows all the time. Like some of the, I I don't know any of these guys, but like some of the Brazilian guys. Uh, I think he got the guy who got second in New York, uh, yeah. Brazilian men's physique guy. He's got he, like the guy was big. I saw him posing in Bev's. Like he's pretty fucking big. Oh and yeah, he's huge, man. Right. But yeah, you know, I know he had more about. cap delts. He had a bit like better V taper, in my opinion. But like, I don't know. I guess he didn't have as good of abs. I I, I don't know. What I'm looking at. I'll be mm. honest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's the same guy, but there was a video that. Auras put out, I think it was just before the Olympia. Now, Auras was sick actually before the Olympia. So, and I even thought in the video, he looks smaller than he actually looks. So it wasn't doing him any justice, but he was in the gym with the men's physique guy, I believe it was. And this men's physique guy, upper body wise, was no doubt bigger than Auras. Like no doubt, easily. And Auras was going, wow, like, oh, he's crazy. <laughs> you know, and he was like really, really impressed by this guy. And it's like, it shouldn't be that way around. So I do like that they've brought it in, but like you guys have said, it's going to lead to guys just not training their legs. Like, how do we atrophy our quads? Like, it's almost <laughs> the opposite of wellness. It's you like, literally going to turn into wheelchair bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it, like, I think in men's physique as well, like, don't get me wrong, well, I can, yeah, and I get what you're saying, Stu, like how you don't understand men's physique, and I think there should be changes to it. Like, add in like a front double bicep, let these guys do like, 
30 second routine or even 20 seconds where they can hit like two poses, like say like two, three poses or whatever. So you can show off some sort of muscularity because literally it is judged on two poses, front and back. That's it. So if you're front and yeah. back shot, one of those looks shit, then half your poses look shit. You're done. Yeah, but that's and I think a, that's like this is the front and back look model, you know, like bikini front and back. That'd be pretty, bro. <laughs> they should make the walkout like part of the judging where it's like that dude had a sick walk. Like it actually was entertaining. Like he whipped around, did a few moves. I don't know. That's just going to be interesting. Like man. a catwalk, man. <laughs> Not a catwalk. You know, you know, no, you know how they do the men's physique. Like the guys will come out. <laughs> but can't turn left. Can't turn left. <laughs> Um, man, I still use quotes from that movie all the time. I'm like, Merman. <coughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about. Um, I mean, yeah, make the, make the actual routine part of it. Make it like something where like the guys, yeah, they can submit their music or whatever. They can come out, they have like a planned routine that goes for like, we've sort of got this now, but at least make it part of a judging so it's not just front and back. I feel like that's just, it makes it more boring to the bodybuilding fans and it makes more bodybuilding fans tune out. But if you had something where it was like a 30 second routine and you get somewhat judged on that, it's a third of your scoring. I reckon that would be sweet because it'd put, make guys put the maximum amount of effort into it. And sometimes they just get boring with the same sort of men's physique moves where it's like, whoosh, arm comes across whoosh, like that. And it's like, There's let them do something. The Jedi. Yeah. yeah. Just let us, sh let them show something. I don't know what happened to Marty just then. But um, I don't know, like something about that. But yeah, I think that it's the smart thing to do because I'm sure men's physique will continue to get more out of hand. And it was cool how Tyler Mannion came out and actually put out like an 11 minute video saying, and even using some pros names and putting him up there saying like, he'd be perfect for classic. He's a little bit too much. The delts are a little bit too big. He can either, you know, and he's sort of giving his like, really what? like, <laughs> what's what? up? What? Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's like it's rest day dad um but um yeah i think yeah it's going to lead to more unproportionate physiques but i think regardless it would just go into full bodybuilding but um so overall i suppose do you guys like this move by the ifb or do you not like it Stu, i'll go to you first i think they had to do something and this is what they can do you know because like it, it's gotten ridiculous. Some of these men's physique guys, again, I think they all look really good, but like, they're not, the, they're not the guys winning shows, but they're fucking huge, man. Like they're, yeah. they're built. Um, so, you know, you can't have guys like that just like totally, you know, dwarfing the classic guys. Cause it's supposed to be like an order, you know, men's physique, classic and bodybuilding. Um, and there's just like, there's no sense to it at this point. Mm -hmm. So, they had to do something. It's about all they can do, and um, we'll, we'll see how the, the athletes actually react to it. You know, if they actually do start shriveling up their legs, or like if they just get smaller. Because, um, I mean, the guy, the guy who won the Olympia this year, his name's Aaron Banks, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's like his level of muscularity is pretty low. I, I say that as like an open guy, right? But like, mm. I mean, it's it, compared to some of the men's seat guys too. Like, he's not like super thick he's not super built you know um and then That's like want, Brian, athletic, athletic yeah hmm. so like i feel like maybe they could have done this without uh, a weight like without instituting a number um just go for a look but i don't know see what happens yeah they sort of done it obviously with the winner but then there was still some guys pushing up and getting better but we're up in like oh, i don't know what to do place like the guy I think he's Brazilian, who was like maybe fourth in the Olympia. But I was like, he looks classic physique just mm -hmm. with board shorts on. Like a, a decently built, big, yeah, classic physique guy. I was like, okay, to me, that's too big. I feel like that should be penalized harsher. Yeah, I think it's Victor Chavez. He's huge. He's got yeah. like massive yeah, I was like, yeah. I always forget his name. But yeah, he, he looks incredible. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think he has an insane physique mm -hmm. for classic physique. Not for yeah. men's physique. For men's physique, it just looked like a jacked bodybuilder up there. And I feel like that would deter... Because what we're trying to do is probably bring more people into the sport. Like Stan, you came from men's physique, you know? I think it's a great entry... Sounds bad saying an entry-level division because the guys are very top and next level and 
very, very hard to get to that level. And we've obviously seen today, it was on uh, Olympia TV. We had... But it's easier to put on like swim, like swimsuit, you know, like uh, shorts and get on stage than like put on a Speedo and get on stage in front of everybody, you know? Like everybody go to exactly. the beach with like shorts on. So going on stage is, you know, it's not that much of a deal. But put on Speedo, it takes a little more like, <laughs> you know. It's like I wouldn't be opposite way, man. <laughs> what? I wouldn't be opposite like way. I started on the hard stuff. <laughs> oh, sorry, you guys do. Yeah, it's, it's a gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> Men's physique is the marijuana of drugs. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. <dating. laughs> but, um, yeah. But, um, anyway, Marty, do you think it's a good move, bad move? Yeah, man, I think we'll, we'll see if it's good or bad. Um, like these guys said, like, if it really just makes guys shrink their legs, then, like, really is it going to be that beneficial? I don't know if it makes guys start making the transition like like stand in then i think it'd be cool because i would love to see some of these guys become classic bodybuilders and progress um but just speaking on this i was at when i was training today i ran into one of the pros he got 11th at the olympia and he's like freaking out about it because he's like mm -hmm. what are they gonna do and i'm like well why don't you just like, why don't you just move up if you're over the cap? And he's like, no way, bro. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to pose. I don't want to put a posing routine together. I don't want to be a bodybuilder. So, like, a lot of these guys, like, they really do, like Stan saying, like, they love men's physique and only that. And their, their goal was never to become more than that. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see, like, how these guys respond to it, I guess. Yeah. It's a good perspective, bro, because I never really thought of it too much that way. I just have come come to it with the thought that everyone wants to be a bodybuilder. This is too can, <laughs> you yeah. know, because for me, I'd yeah. be competing in bodybuilding yeah. if I could be competitive. Yeah. Like I, I did classic physique. I won like a national title at that, like the year before it was Arnold Classic. But that was always classic bodybuilding, you know, back in when the old federations were split, all that sort of stuff. So I could do all right at it, but to be an open classic physique guy, it's just, I don't, don't think that's in my wheelhouse, you know? So men's physique gives me that chance to be able to potentially become a pro. So it's like, it's not just for the fact of becoming a pro, but it's almost like I would be doing some sort of prep if there wasn't men's physique around at some point and getting myself in shape. But the stage gives an extra incentive and it's sort of fun competing. You still get that competitiveness with other people. And I, that's what I enjoy about it personally. But it's not like my love is men's physique. I'm not covering all the men's physique shows. I'm not excited to watch men's physique like I am classic in these other divisions. So I hope that they just make men's physique a little bit more entertaining, but I understand why they wouldn't add that routine aspect that I talked about too, because it makes the entry into men's physique harder, which is part of a reason for the division, which feeds the classic physique and feeds bodybuilding. And with all these new divisions, people say everyone thought it might kill open bodybuilding. Open bodybuilding is stronger than it's ever been. So I think that it's only feeding open bodybuilding because it's getting out to more people. More people have an entry to competing and it sort of works out that way. I went the opposite way because I always loved bodybuilding, competed teenage bodybuilding, went to classic when it came out. So I'm just, as the divisions come out, I just keep going down. <laughs> so, maybe I'll do a fitness one where you just wear pants or something. I don't know. That's <laughs> why <laughs> hey. have you seen they've got like divisions in, uh i think it's mostly other federations where guys yeah, come out yeah. wearing like suits and stuff yeah i did that you, you did I it had, like a round suits one round in like uh swimsuits and one round like in sportswear do you have photos of this <laughs> yeah man i do <laughs> <laughs> we are 55 minutes into the podcast and i am going to make a note of that man send me that photo i'll put it up on the screen <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> oh man, that would be so funny. <laughs> it's um, it's quite funny. Like, and the thing that always throws me because it's actually been done in Australia because we have a lot of other federations here, and it used to be more prominent some of these other federations. But they would always have the the male fitness sports category, and they come out with like a tennis racket and a ball, and they're like, <laughs> and I'm like. This makes me <laughs> want to quit bodybuilding so bad. <laughs> but then you see you see the women and they'll be like, the ones that go really dark on their tan, like they've gone too far. Mm -hmm. And then they put on like a nightgown and they just look like a carrot in a dress. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's so unappealing. It's like, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. It's kind of hard for us to like kind of realize that like a lot of the guys who are in immense physique, like really into it, 
that's like a totally separate culture from the mm-hmm. culture we're into. Like they're yeah. they're wearing their own clothing brands. They got their own, you know, stuff that they're a part of. And like, like how many how many open bodybuilders does Dark Sport have? How many? They got a couple of classic guys, but it's like almost all men's physique guys, right? Yeah. So they're all like they yeah, they're, they're doing their own subculture. Thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if mm. classic really has that so much. I think a lot of bodybuilding fans and classic guys like like they overlap, but men's physique really is like its own thing. It's like yeah. there's like a kind of a bit of rave culture that gets in there, and like <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's different. It's different from what we do. I feel like the men's physique guys they dabble in classic. Like they know C Bum, like they might know Ramon. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they dabble in it. They'll follow a few of the guys and they sort of know when C Bum wins and stuff. And then the bodybuilders, they follow, they like at least dabble in the classic, but it's like rarely the bodybuilders dabble in the men's physique and rarely the men's physique guys dabble in the bodybuilding stuff unless they're just like mega fans of the sport. But I know what you mean, man. Yeah, it's like it's like complete segregation in the industry. But um no, nah, I, I, I like the fact that it's there. It's like it breeds I think it breeds a lot of like douchiness in the gym. Which <laughs> frustrates me (laughs) like i started going to a gym and there's more like it's a bigger gym and things like that but you go after school hours and it's not the funnest environment to be in for me and i always thought oh people always complain about that whatever it's good that people are into fitness and stuff but it's like once you go in there at the worst time i'm like oh no i'm gonna change the time i train based on that literally and i have because i'm like i don't like being in the gym at that specific time as, as, you know, if I can avoid it. It doesn't make me hate it completely, but at the same time, I was like, uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, if that's what the kids want to do, man, I mean, more more power to them. I don't, yeah. I used to, like, get all mad at, like, that that separation of the cultures. Like, I used to shit on men's physique guys a bunch because, like, that's what you're supposed to do, right? But, like, I don't really mind them now. You know, we all get along. There's, there's some mutual yeah. respect there. They understand who's the big dog at the gym. You know, so as long as they keep that in mind, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, and back Cal- in the day, used to, people used to cop shit. It was like men's bikini, and it was like, I heard all these stories, and I'm like, hell no. I'm like, I'll never do men's physique. And then I was like, these guys are getting pretty jacked. I'm getting some respect now. And it's like, I'm normally not someone who cares what people think, but I think a lot of people would have been scared off competing men's physique early days based on the perception of a persona and everything that the division gave off. Uh, if you were into bodybuilding, but now it's just completely accepted, normal. Everyone's friends now. It's not as you know segregated. And I, I like the fact that there is like a gym culture among younger kids because it's better than doing that than getting into like you know worse paths like hard drugs, things like that. Because that's it seems like it's one way or the other a lot of times these days. People either get into fitness or they get into drugs. So <laughs> fitness is better. <laughs> but um. 